Well, tonight we are hearing from those that worked in the suspect's home, including a contractor who tells us he was asked to build a secret room in the house but declined. ABC4's Nick McGurk is live at that home with what he's found out tonight. Nick. Emily, I want to get to that in a second, but first, let me show you the growing memorial outside the suspect's home. Uh, teddy bears, balloons, even some flowers. But we did speak with a contractor and a cleaner, both of whom did work inside this home and vowed they would never go back. Yes, the requests he was asking for were, it weren't normal requests. Before this house became the center of a missing person investigation, there was contractor Brian Wolf, called for a possible job by Ayula Ajayi. She just kind of said, I need some big, strong hooks anchored in the concrete. But it wasn't just hooks. Something out of a movie. It's mind-blowing. Ayula Ajayi said he wanted a room with a secret entrance. Honestly, my, I don't know what he wanted it for, but my gut was something not normal. I mean, who needs a soundproof room with a thumb lock and hooks on the... I mean, in my opinion, it was for something bad. Wolf says he got out of there with no intent to go back. Oh, well, I just felt uncomfortable and not safe. It's the same feeling Tara Chatterton had. She was a hired cleaner at the home earlier this year. Um, the only thing that was odd to me was just how many cameras were in his house. Um, I've cleaned several houses and people have had cameras, but this one just stood out a little bit more just because of how they were placed in the master bedroom. She says Ajayi invited her to drink whiskey, but she politely refused. And she says she knew in her gut she would never return. And I just had this feeling that I shouldn't go back. When we left the house, he, uh, we both got in the truck and looked at each other and we're like, oh, dude, that was weird, right? And he, he looked at me, he's like, yep, we're not doing that job right now. I was like, hell no, let's get the hell out of here. And then we, we drove off. Of course, he could have had no idea what would have allegedly happened here, according to police. So many what ifs going through the mind of not only uh, the contractor, but the cleaner here. So much to unpack and uh, obviously a lot of emotional issues, a lot of emotional trauma with the two that I spoke with today. Obviously, somewhere deep down, Emily, they're thinking to themselves, did I see something? Could I have done something? The answer uh, obviously is no here, uh, but certainly they have a lot of, of interesting things that they have to think about going forward. But we do appreciate them sharing their stories uh, with us tonight. Most definitely, Nick. And one more question we just have to ask, was there anything else they said outside of the jobs they were asked to do that just gives more information about who a Jai is as a person? It's interesting, Emily, because you hear Marcos in his story, you hear the neighbors who say they're in, in total shock, that they didn't see this coming. And that's what we heard from both of the people that we spoke with tonight. Inside of the home is where those clues came from. The unusual request for the secret room with a fingerprint scanner and hooks on the walls, uh, that was going to be a soundproof room. That was the red flag for the contractor. As far as the cleaner, she said he was very nice, very professional, very quiet. But it was all of those cameras that gave her that feeling that something here wasn't quite right. So interesting. Thank you so much for your report tonight, Nick.